today what we're going to do, we're going to hear a presentation um, and we are going to be able to have some time to ask some questions if there are questions about specific grants that either you've applied for or just trying to understand this process better. That is the point. We want to make sure that the dollars that we appropriate in our um, budget and in our budget implementation actually go out to organizations like yours to help the people within our communities. So today I am going to introduce um, Jared Walkowitz. Walk 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 Thank you. I know. I'm like, it's a long day already. Um, from, uh, he is the Chief Accountability Officer here with the Illinois um, Department of DCEO. I know, Department of Commerce. There's a whole lot of different agencies and responsibilities that DCEO is responsible for. But Jared is here to give this presentation. Theo is here also from DCEO to answer any questions. And so again, um, there's water. If anybody needs something while they're speaking, just give a high sign to myself, Natalie, who's in the back, and Joe, who is here um, from my team as well. We're here to be of assistance to any, you, all of you today. So thank you. Everybody, so as I said, my name is Jared Walkowitz. I'm with the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic, Economic Opportunity. I run our Office of Accountability. So a big part of that is providing technical assistance to people in the community, people interested in grants, or just people who want to know about what we can offer. So just, a, just high level about the agency. We have line items, meaning that if you are actually in the budget, we would handle those grants. We have an Office of Tourism. We also have uh, just really random programs. when. The CARES Act came out uh, and the ARPA, ARPA, the Fair for Rescue Plan Act came out. We handle a lot of that. So we worked on programs like uh, helping communities with COVID related expenditures, but we also did work with uh, small businesses. The big program, you might have heard of that, or a back to business program, the, that as well. So we handle a lot. We do a lot of different things, Office of Broadband, but we do have a website that you can go to. So I'll explain all of that uh, during this presentation. So um, just a quick overview of what I'm going to be talking about today. So I'm really going to take you through the entire grant process and what to look for. So you're not going to, I'm not going to give you a step by step, but I'm going to just shape how you think about grants and show you all the resources that are available to you. Will we get a copy of the presentation? Sure, yes. So, um, so basically an overview of the presentation here. So where to find grant opportunities. There's a couple different places to find them. One is obviously our website, there's also a catalog of state financial assistance, and that shows grants statewide. So I'll show you where to go for that as well. So if the Department of Commerce doesn't have it, you can also go to these websites and see the grants for all the state, from the state of Illinois. Um, I'll talk about the notice of funding opportunity. That's the main document that explains our program. So what, what is the program? How do you apply? Uh, what, are, what are we gonna judge you on? when you apply, when you submit your application. There's some important things to look at. I know that a lot of times you're a first time grant writer, you might not get into all the intricacies of what's expected, but I'll show you what to look at. So really understanding like what the intent of our program is, and then also what's probably most important that sometimes gets overlooked, is understanding what we're actually looking at as part of our criteria. So you can get the highest score possible. Because I've seen grants that come in where they wrote a great application, but they kind of forgot about 25% so the highest score they can get is a 75, while another one might write an average application but hit all the points, and they can maybe get like an 80. So just I want to make sure that you are really showing us everything that you can do as a grantee of the state. Um, so I'll talk about developing a plan to apply. I uh, pr uh, Previous to this role, I've run tax credit programs. I work in New York City. also work for New York State, and now I'm in Illinois. So I, I developed this interest in, in applications and how to do it, so I'll talk about that a bit. Um, then I'll give some tips on developing a strong application, like I mentioned earlier. The Notice of Funding Opportunity has all that information, but there's also information out that we'll talk a bit about how to research and apply. Um, application review details, and then um, the grant agreement and achieving outcomes, because just because you get a grant doesn't mean that's not the end. Some, big celebration when you get a grant, but um, I want to make sure that when you do that, you're successful. So 
say it's, for example, a job training program, and you say in your application that you're training 100 people, and then you end up training 20 at the end of it, that's kind of a problem. So I want to talk about making sure that you're on track and you're doing things the right way. So really, you should leave here understanding how to find the grant opportunities, write an effective application, and be successful in the grantee. And also, if you have questions, just raise your hand. I want to make sure there's a discussion, because grants and grant management is really gray in a lot of ways. It's not black and white. So a lot of discussions you can have. So if you become a grantee, always realize we have someone there to work with you. So we'll work through any questions you may have, because no grants, no two grants are ever the same. There's always a ton of things. And, and Tito here gets a lot of questions that we discuss. They're always different. So just we can talk about what the options are. OK. So this is, this is the main thing here. So where do you find grant opportunities? Um, so this first here is gata.illinois.gov. I try not to use that word gata. You probably heard about that if, you're, if you know grants. It's the Grant Accountability and Transparency Act. So that's basically the act that requires us to make things tra make grants transparent. So we follow all of that. And that's the, actually the main thing I do is make sure that all of our programs are compliant with that. But really, that's just how we manage grants. You don't have to worry about GATA or you hear, oh, it's because of GATA. We've always done things essentially the same way. It's just that it's become more of a statewide thing now. So GATA to Illinois.gov, and this is where, and I took a screenshot here so you can kind of see what it looks like. A lot of, like, a lot of hyperlinks here. You can see like Board of Higher Education. We have Department of Agriculture. So they also have grants. So you can look at those grants there. Um, but then on the left side over there, apply for funding. That's, that's actually the page that my office manages. So um, those are all the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity grants. So go to that page. I think right now I think we have about 12 grants up there that are actually accepting applications. There's a lot going on. And my office right now is reviewing two or three that should be out in the next couple of weeks. So, so there's always things changing there. So you can go to this website here, gathered.illinois.gov, to sign up for uh, email alerts. They come in every Friday. They tell you about the grants that just come out or you can just make sure to visit our website every once in a while. And also follow us on social media. We're always announcing new grants, so you can see them there. So next, uh, I wanna to start to talk a bit about the notice of funding opportunity and give an overview of what that document is. So you can see over there on that side, um, we, have, we have a film and TV workforce training program to help get people into the film industry. That they've, they've, it's not currently open, but it's one of our programs. But I just want to show kind of what it looks like. So if you just look at it, it's really intimidating. It could be about a 12 to 15 page document that gives a ton of information. I want to make sure that you know exactly what the different sections are as you're reviewing it, so you know really where to, what, everything's important, but really what's important for your application and where, and how you can use this to help you have a strong application. So, um, so I'll just go through the different sections here. So you open this up on our website, you're gonna see notice of funding opportunity and program description. So that's, overall, that's the section where it explains exactly what we want out of the program. So the idea of grants is that it's, you're kind of doing, you're doing work for the state of Illinois. So we give you the money to do that. And we tell you in this document what we want you to do. And can I, I'm going to, if I don't, if you don't mind, I, yeah. I want to interrupt two, two things. One, how many people here have actually written a grant? In general, we'll say it in general. Okay. Two, how many of you have actually been to this website before? Okay. Just Perfect. Contact. Sorry. And I'm also really excited about this. We have a grantee resource site. So we have 19, like five to 10 minute videos on different parts of the grant process. So everything from how do you spend the grant funds appropriately? Because I'll get to this later, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but say you get a million dollars from us and then you spend a million dollars on something right away. You can't just do that. You have to make sure that you're doing, doing it appropriately so you're getting the best price for it. So we have videos on that and videos on what I'm doing today actually. Those are videos on that as well. And they also bought an, an application with a cartoon, so they might be kind of fun to watch. So, okay, so I'll go through the notice of funding opportunity. So funding information. You'll find out about the different funding sources, and then 
uh, what the funds can be spent on. Um, eligibility information. So um, some of our grants are for nonprofits. Some are for specific types of nonprofits. Some are for local governments. Some are actually for private businesses as well, or certain types of businesses within those categories. So that's something to look at too. Uh, we go through the application submission information. There's about five or six documents, potentially more that you have to submit, that's all outlined in the application submission information section, and we also collect it through an online form. So you can't just find a contact at the agency and email them your application. Unfortunately, that won't be accepted, and it happens all the time. So make sure you look at this document and know where to submit the information. Can you repeat that, please? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So um, there's an online form to submit applications. Sometimes an application will come in through another avenue. We just can't accept that. So I've unfortunately had to deny applications in the past for that. Um, so application review information, that's the criteria. So just keeping that in mind when you're applying, uh, what are we judging you on? Because you might spend a lot of time on one section, but it might not be something that is really that important. It might only be that 5% of your score. But we want to make, so really understanding what we're judging you on and, and, and crafting your responses and what you submit to what we're going to be uh, scoring your applications on. Um, we have award administration information. So we have a lot of cites, some citations in there on different requirements like paying for family wage if it's a construction project, uh, you know, procurement standards. Um, so things, things like that. Um, and then uh, state agency contacts. So my office, um, you can email us, and we'll get to that at the end, but ceo.granthelp.illinois.gov, that's our grant help desk. I have three staff members on there, so there are technical support managers. So they, all day, every day, but they answer questions you may have. They also put on webinars uh, twice a month. Uh, at the beginning of the month, we do a pre-qualification webinar. So how do you qualify for grants to be able to apply? And in the middle of the month, a rotating grant topic on all different things, like grant writing or other uh, requirements of the grants. So um, I just want to say one more thing about the notice of funding opportunity. All questions for the program, 95% of questions for the program are found in this, in this document. And if it's not found in there, we're getting questions, we, we put up the uh, frequently asked questions document. I saw you raise your hand. Any questions? Uh, yes. Just that help um, uh, yes, email ceo.grantshelp at illinois.gov. Yeah, ceo.grantshelp, one word, at illinois.gov. Okay. So now that you've you know, you're learned about where to find the grants, where, where the notice, the, in order to view the notice of funding opportunity, you get a good idea about that. Now we'll talk a bit about developing a plan to apply. So um, the first thing, probably I would say the easiest part of it, but it might not seem like that, is becoming pre-qualified. So um, grantsiteillinois.gov forward slash portal, that's where you go and you can register your business with our website. If you're not pre-qualified at the time of the application deadline, automatically denied. So just make sure you do that. Do that now, actually. Just do it right away. How many people here are, are already gathered to qualify? Okay. Yeah. So just to go over, it, 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 it's pretty straightforward. The portal does guide you through the process. We have to register the Secretary of State is one, Sam.gov. I, I'm just going to tell you, we will make sure that you, for those of you who, who don't have this information about GATA, Representative Barbara Hernandez, I believe, is doing a virtual GATA pre-funding. Her office is in Aurora, but we will include that with follow-up information in case anyone is interested in, in um, doing the GATA pre-certified with her office. Yeah, yeah we, and we run those monthly. So at the end of this, I'll, we'll put up some QR codes, and you can actually go to our site and, and uh, get on a, on a mailing list, and we'll get you on all of those, um, all of those weapons. They're, they're, they're actually really good. Like, I know, it's my team, so I say awesome, nice things, but they do spend a lot of time on this to make sure, and we adjust, we get different questions. 
We also have office hours, let's say once a week for one hour. So you can just come on, it's also WebEx, don't just turn your camera on, just ask some questions. A lot of times people just sit there to listen because they also have questions, or they might not know what to ask. And, and those help us also to know what you need so we can develop other webinars for you all. Okay, okay, so pre qualification I talked about, that's kind of what it looks like. So you would actually be able, it's kind of like a checklist, so you can see everything you have to do. And this is a screenshot from the website there. Um, and then the other part is making sure you're an eligible entity. I don't want you to waste your time applying. We do sometimes get applications and, and the business is just not eligible. A lot of time spent, maybe they hire a grant writer. Hopefully you don't need to hire a grant writer because we're helping you out here, or we're helping grant writers write better grants. But you decide on that, but we have the eligibility there. So I don't want you to waste your time applying. Especially if you're, uh, it's time and money. So, any questions? Okay. Just more on developing a plan to apply. So, I talked about this earlier. Uh, familiarize yourself with the notice of funding opportunity. Uh, so, so read the entire thing. I know I went through the different sections of it, but read it. Like understand it. Uh, if you have any questions on it, we do have contacts in the documents. You can ask those questions. We just want to make sure you really have a good understanding of, of what, what is uh, required of you. Um, understand the eligible expenditures. And this is really important because some of our grants are for capital only, so like brick and mortar. We have received applications for, um, for construction where we see a lot of operations, like, like salaries aren't included. You can't do that. So we don't want... So we don't want a business to apply, put, put, make a bigger warehouse, and then not be able to afford the expenses that come with that. So just really understand what, what you just pay for. Another thing that I hear a lot about is if you spend over $300,000 a year in a grant, um, you owe us an audit, and we review that audit, that's also an expense. So just making sure you're aware of some of the expenses that come with it. So even though you're getting a million dollars, there are expenses that come with that that the grant may not be able to cover. Um, and la another part here is just, as, and I touched on this, but decide if your entity can successfully complete the grant program. So I said earlier, like if you're doing a job training program uh, and, and you apply to say you're, you're training 100 people, we hold you to those numbers. Because someone who maybe applied and said they're gonna, only, gonna train 50, we didn't give them, give, give them the grant because we wanted to train more people, and that was part of the criteria. But if you only train half that number, there might be some consequences to that. Like, if you were only, say, half, do you have to give half the money back, or? It, it depends, so it depends it's on the program. Fixed. But um, we have, uh, our Illinois Works Pre-Apprenticeship Program, it's to help people become apprentices in the future. That's a job training program. We actually connect the number of people finished with grant funds. So we release funds on the way. So if you don't reach the number, at least you can kind of fudge it when, as you get along. And then with that program too, we even say, like, okay, you finished the program. That's not the end goal here. The end goal is to be certified in, in whatever it is. So we want to make sure they got that certification. So I think it, I don't know exactly, so I think it's like 60% of the graduate get that certification, pass the test, then you do even better. So we start, we want to see good outcomes too. So yeah, a good question about that. Um, oh yeah, and then, then and of course, so you're applying. We also have information on the, uh, the grant agreements. So um, familiarize yourself with the grant agreement. We have that on our website. We have the template out there. So you can see what is required. You can read through it. Um, understand the details and frequency of reporting requirements. So typically grants, you report to us quarterly, so every three months. Um, that's where you, provide to us your expenditures. So make sure you have documentation of that. So proof of uh, so the invoice, proof of the expense, uh, proof that you've paid it. So cancel check or looking at your bank account statement, showing the money go out and being received by the contractor or whoever you're paying. Um, and then make, just having that on, on your, uh, in, your gen, in your ledger. Um, make sure you're complying with procurement standards. I mentioned this earlier. And this, I'm not going to get into too much detail on this, but you can go to our website and learn about it a bit. But there's different things. So 
typically anything under ten thousand dollars, it just has to be reasonable. So from your experience, you can buy like office equipment under ten thousand dollars reasonable. Anything between ten thousand and two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you need to reach out to, to two or three different places to get the best price. Anything above that is a formal procurement. So you just need to be prepared to put out a big document, make sure people see it, make sure people apply, and you award everyone, but you also document that award process. Because with public funds, we just want to make sure we're in the most efficient use of the funds. Um, prevailing wage was paid for construction grants. We have had grants uh, shut down for not paying prevailing wage, wages, and there have been penalties to the uh, contractors on these grants. We try to make sure you're just aware of that so the prevailing wages can be found on our Department of Labor website. So we can help you through that as well, just to know where that is. But make sure you pay prevailing wage because there are a lot of unions, there's people in labor. They go out and they make sure that's happening. So we do get complaints. I see the letters, so I a lot of times we'll respond to the Comptroller and Department of Labor on questions they have. So, we don't always track that because prevailing wage is something that's kind of hard to track. So just make sure you're doing it because if you do get reported for not paying it, you do have to provide a lot of details on it. So I want to make sure you're aware of that before you, before you get involved with the construction grant. And then we also have policies that are required of your organization. So procurement policies and sexual harassment policies, you must have that uh, as part of your grant agreement. You sign up, you have that, so you will have that uh, like on hand. So you see at the bottom here, the Uniform Grant Agreement can be found at dco.illinois.gov. You'll see in our grantee resource site. Uh, you know, check it out. It's kind of boring reading, but just see what you're getting into, because I want to make sure you're just not signing away. Because a lot of times people say I didn't read it. So I just want to make sure you know, look at that. But we, we try to simplify it through all the other, uh, all the other resources we have. Yeah. I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but good. is there a threshold as to the funding amount? Like, is there is it like a low to ten thousand to high to over a million? Is there some kind of range? <coughs> it's all the notes of funding opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, all the thresholds can be found in the notes of funding opportunity. I think the one I looked at today, it was twenty-five thousand was the low end, but like three hundred thousand dollars was the top end. So it just really it just depends on the trend. Yeah. Okay, so um, so developing a plan to apply. So these are things to think about too as you're developing your application. So um, so what are the sections in the criteria that we need? So uh, you're, you're showing that you're satisfying that need. So some of the questions to ask yourself, uh, is there a need in the community that this grant can help address? Because typically that's what we want out of it, helping the community. Um, how much will this project cost and what expenses will be required? So uh, do your research because uh, the budget is part of the application. So making sure that you have a good idea of what's going to be spent because if you get the grant, we use the budget that you submit. If you end up to change the budget later, it takes some time. So if you kind of not really researched and, and ballparked it, that will cause a lot of delay on the back end. So we don't have any problem with modifying grant agreements. It's just something that happens a lot, but if you put in a budget that's more accurate, you can get your project done a lot faster. Um, are my expenditures allowed in 2 CFR 200? So 2 CFR 200 is that federal guidance about grants. You could literally just Google 2 CFR 200 and write what you're spending your money on. We've seen first class seats on grants. We disallow that, we don't allow that. So sometimes it's just under the travel, so some of these things kind of sneak through. It's even like extra life that you can't pay for. So you have to talk to your grant, you have to talk to your grant manager, because there are sometimes things that can be allowed. So you have to talk to us. It's not, I, I said gray. There's lots of gray areas. So we want to make sure, and there might be some flexibility, but there are like different flexibilities offered too. So the federal government might, might say, oh, here's right now, like there's an extension on audits, or there's, this is now suspended. We keep up with all of that. So just talk with your grant manager because we internally we, we work on a lot of trainings with our grant managers so they are aware of different things happening in the grant world. Um, so also ask yourself, does your organization have a history of this type of work? If not, what is your plan to leverage experts to get it done? 
Uh, so there's also quality and capacity that we look at. So capacity, quality is your ability to do the work they want to do, and capacity is your ability to get the grant done and report to us the right way. So if you don't have that ability, that is something we look at. We sometimes ask for resumes, or we ask for the history of some of the staff that's gonna be on the grant. You might lose points if you don't have that, but if you are maybe going out there, you're gonna put a job posting out, you're gonna contract with someone, that can increase your points. So we'd see that, and we, it wouldn't necessarily hurt, it wouldn't hurt you to do that type of work. If you're acknowledge what some of the weaknesses are, what you're gonna be doing, that, that makes for a stronger application. And I've mentioned procurement quite a bit, but familiar, familiarize yourself with procurement standards. We have a, I think it was like an eight minute tutorial video on that. Look at that, that's just really important. We just wanna make sure you're spending the funds correctly. Um, and then I just include a couple of resources here that you can get after, but you know, we have our grantee resource site, it's dco.illinois.gov, and also 2CFR 200. You can see it's a long address there. But uh, go to those sites, just get familiar with uh, your grant. Good questions? I do this all day, every day. So <laughs> if you uh, have to make sure I get the right thing. Okay. I did say this, but I will repeat it. Uh, read the entire notice of funding opportunity. You might hear the word NOFO to get a grant. I try not to call it that because it sounds kind of weird. Very government, but so the notice of funding opportunity. Um, understand all the citations in the notice of funding opportunity. So uh, we have an office of employment and training. So they do our job training uh, services. Uh, they get grantees. They cite a lot of studies in their in their uh, notice of funding opportunity. So the studies will help inform you on your application. So. If there's another notice of funding opportunity that cites something, read that. Just make sure you're familiar with it because that's that's typically what we're looking for. It's like a grantee or an applicant that has a lot of attention to detail and includes that in their programs because that will improve the application. Um, use the notice of funding opportunity as a checklist. So we have, we have uh, all the documents that you must submit. Uh, go down, just make sure you just Literally print it out or from your screen. Make sure you're going through all the right, the right documents and you're submitting those. And also all the criteria section. Are you addressing everything we ask you for as part of the criteria in your application? Uh, this might sound kind of crazy, but note the due date and time. And if a minute late, we deny. We're, we're very strict about that. We have to be fair to everybody. So typically. 5 p.m. is the due date, Central Standard Time. Um, so just make sure you know that. Also, don't wait till the last hour, because a lot of times we get we get like I get calls or something. So if you are having issues the day before, we can work with you on that. If you're having issues at 4:55, that might be a problem because we're getting a lot of calls at that time. Do you have a character or word limit on your application? I submitted one. A funding opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we some do, some don't. Okay. Sometimes we uh, there's one new program that's coming out, and there is a limit on us. Like it has to be a four page doc, you know. So we see that. So it depends on the program. But um, I is it is it a training job training grant? It was um, from another uh, okay. Foundation, but okay. um, I didn't really think about the you know characters versus characters and strings. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we said character limit. Right but yeah, that'll be in the notice of funding opportunity. Um, oh yeah, big one here. Know what constitutes a complete application. Uh, don't don't just if you don't there's there's just certain parts that I say are more important than others. It's all really is required. So make sure you submit everything. So just as I said, use the notice of funding opportunity as a checklist. Okay, so uh, so I, I know I bring this up a lot, but 
your school, uh, yeah. Review the, review the criteria, answer questions in the project narrative with the criteria in mind. So, you know, as you're, as you're looking at it, make sure you understand the criteria. And you can see on, that's, a, that's actually a screenshot from our notice of funding opportunity. You can see how we say the need up to 35 points, and then we say a demonstration of the repair, replacement, or enhancement proposed will address an existing deficiency. So really outline what that deficiency is there. Show us that. You might not think to put that, because it might be too detailed, but be really detailed because none of our <coughs> none of our our merit reviewers are told not to make any assumptions because we don't want to say, oh, we know this grantee, they'll probably do it. We really only depend on the applications, on the application itself. And that's also that's so that's by design. We also make sure that only one person has existing relationships with the grantees, because we want to have like some sort of control in there. Because say it's your long-term time grantee and all the grant, all the people on the merit review team already know you. That might put a, an unfair bias for that organization. So by design, we make sure that people that may not be as familiar with the, with the grantee themselves, so they really, they look at the application and get the score based on that application. Um, so as I said, be descriptive. Um, cite research or facts. So if you say something, uh, Make sure you cite it, if you, if, especially if you're citing data. Uh, link to that in your application so we can fact check it. We will fact check your applications as they are. It's just, it will make it go a lot easier, and also it just makes for a stronger, more professional looking application. That also helps a lot, especially with a, with a, with a merit team. Um, and I would also just submit documentation to support the information in your application. Uh, documentation is really important. It's all about that application. So making sure that we can confirm that everything you say is accurate, and that you also you'll be able to do the work. So if you say you'll be training 200 people, maybe talk about a program that you did before. If you haven't done it before, then we start looking really closely at the other parts of the application, because you might be a new organization. Because you can say anything in the applications. We want to make sure that what you say is accurate, and we do fact check a lot. The budget. Um, this is uh, this is big. So the budget is the backbone of your proposal. So you say all these nice things. You're in a great story, and that's great. But the budget's really important because we sometimes require a cash match. So say you want five hundred thousand dollars, we require a one-to-one -one match. You might need to get money from somewhere else. It's not always the case, but just things to look at. So there might be a cash match that's required. Um, Look at that. Um, review the instructions in the template. So we have a budget template that you'll see on our site. Review the instructions so you fill it out correctly. Um, I know it sounds simple, but a lot of times these are submitted incorrectly and that can hurt your application score. Um, and then lastly here, do your research on expenditures, um, including maybe reaching out to some vendors, or if you want to get crazy, maybe even starting on the procurement vendors at that point because you can show us the like, real accurate uh, expen expenses and you know your budget's looking good that'll help your score but also it'll help you uh, execute your grant agreement quicker meaning that you get your project started a lot quicker okay so I said this earlier but Submit a complete application. Um, use the notice of funding opportunity as a checklist, and as I said also, uh, note the submission dates and times. Uh, lead applications aren't accepted. I handle all the appeals that we have, so if you are denied and you think you did submit it on time, we look at that appeal. We do, we do have a system that does track when you submitted the application, but if anything goes wrong where you think it didn't, you know, something's wrong, you do have the opportunity to appeal after denial. So my office doesn't do that. We have, we have uh, accepted some. So we, we, have, we had a program that took about 200 applications in. There was just one, one mistake. They, they uh, appealed and they were put back in the pile. So those things happen, but also my office does check on that on the back end to make sure nothing's slipping through the cracks. 
And then you can see it's the checklist. We, we, we literally put boxes on the notice of funding opportunity, so it looks like a checklist. So it looks like that. And then we have these, uh, it's, it's a hyperlink where you get there, but there's a place to submit the applications. So, oh yeah. And I heard this great thing. Um, the grant application, the grant application is, is a plan. It's not a plan for the plan. So don't apply and say, if I get it, then maybe I'll do this. Give us the plan because that will strengthen your application. We won't accept you saying, I need $300,000 on TDD. That's not good. <laughs> it, ha it happens. So I went to a grant workshop. They said that and I, I wrote it down right away because it was really helpful for me to wrap my head around it and it'll be helpful for you guys too. So um, application review details, so this is the criteria. So um, all details of the merit-based review is in the application review information section of the Notice of Funding Opportunity. I know I say this a lot because that's really important to get a higher score. Um, our, so Grant Account Accountability and Transparency Act requires two people review all grant applications. Our agency has a policy of three. We think that two, if you have one person that's giving you 100, one giving you a 50, it doesn't, really, it doesn't happen too often, but we think three is better to kind of make sure we're really getting a solid score there. And just so you know, um, if anyone's scores are more than 10 points apart, we do have the opportunity to discuss it because we know that sometimes something's missed. So we want to make sure we're getting the best scores. So if it's uh, someone gives a 90 and a 70, they do come together to discuss it to see if the 70 person missed something or maybe the 70 or the 90 person is something great, we can adjust the scores there. But, but it is, it, it's an iterative process. So making sure we get the best, the best uh, scores there. Um, everything's in writing. You'll never find out that you didn't get an award over the phone. Um, we, do, we give you the uh, denial letter or we give the notice of state opportunity. We give you the notice of state award, and that's where you see, that's where you see you're getting, getting the uh, grant. So you do get something online. You can say I accept, and if you deny it, you get the opportunity to appeal. Um, and then I put the uh, the GATA administrative code section 7,000.350. If you're interested in some really interesting reading, you can read about all that. But when we follow that, I guarantee it. I obsess over that because if we don't, you can appeal. And then that's where my, my work gets a lot more difficult. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Right, so the, the grant agreement and the achieving outcome. So now you got to the point where uh, you you got an award. You got the notice of state award and Here's the grant. Here's like an overview of some of the important things to look at in your grant agreement. So, your grant agreement will include information. So, if it's a competitive grant, your grant agreement will include information from your application as deliverables. So, I use the job training example all the time. You say you're training 100, we'll hold you to 100. If you're going to maybe do 80, let's talk. Don't at the end get and tell me you only trade. You only train 80 because then it just takes a little longer. We can always adjust as we're doing the work because sometimes there's a real reason something doesn't happen. We we consider that when we're doing when we're looking at when we're managing the grant. Um, reporting details will be in the grant agreement, which is the financial reports, but also our programmatic reports. Um, this is where we we will give you funds based on your expenditures, and we'll also make sure as you're moving along in long the grant, you're achieving what you set out to do. So say uh, you've spent 75% of the grant and nothing's happened programmatically, we'll start questioning that. We'll, we'll probably catch a lot earlier, but those types of things are what we look at. So you are reporting on what you've accomplished. Um, most grants are reimbursement, but there's potential for working capital advance. So that's the first two months of your grant to get you moving. We can, you will tell us what you expect to spend the money on and then we'll give you funds to get started and we'll call a rolling advance. You actually keep those funds on hand throughout the grant term. So you have the first two months on hand. If you've already, if, say that you're gonna finish it the first two months and tell us that, you could potentially get all the funds at once. 
you'll be expected to report back immediately, but we have had some capital projects that they got the award, they got started, took a while to get the grant agreement done because of the budget. So we ended up getting all the money at once because it could show us off the bat, here's the invoice, we, we know what you're gonna spend. The follow up on your end would be showing us that canceled check or showing us the bank account information. So we, we could give you the money up front. There are some grants that give um, advances. They're, they're extremely rare. Uh, but typically none of our line item, like the, the grants that are through our, our budget or grants um, through these competitive opportunities, they're typically not uh, advances. There's a lot of hoops you have to jump through for that, so it's a bit different. So, but the working capital advance is sometimes a better, better option. Um, I said you're gonna be reporting. The grant manager will request documentation. So if you spent, ten, oh, you know, say $100,000, we'll wanna see that you spent that $100,000. So just because you're telling us at the beginning of the money, we wanna see the documents. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, this is something some of our grantees, especially newer grantees get tripped up on, is um, you are required to submit an audit if you spent uh, $3,000 or more per year. So if you've done that, um, you will have an audit due six months after your fiscal year ends. And if it's a single audit, meaning that you've received $750,000 or more in federal funds, then you'll, that will be due nine months after your fiscal year. Um, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, my office does track that, and we're really good. Good for us, bad for probably people who didn't submit it, but we do track that. My name is signed on there, so I do get a lot of calls, but I always still look into it. Um, and that's an issue that does come up. So I wanna make sure you're just aware of that. It's one of those expenses that comes with grants is an audit. It's required by the law, so we do, we do track that. Okay. So, um, almost done here. So key, key take, takeaways here. Notice the funding opportunity. That's, like, that's the main event. I get a ton of questions on grants. 100% of the time I read the notice of funding opportunity, and I said 95% of the time I get the answer. So it's probably in there, but we also will always answer your questions. So don't feel like you're bothering us, it's our job. Um, creating a plan or outline for your program is critical to strong application. I can always tell the ones that have kind of freewheeled it, and I can also see the ones that are really well put together and we can really follow. Just remember that there's the people reviewing it don't know you or don't know your organization, so just make sure it's really organized. An organized approach to telling us what you want to do. Um, your application score is determined by the criteria, the notice of funding opportunity, so use that as you're answering all the questions. Um, the budget's the backbone of your application. Sometimes it's, it, it could be like 20% of your score is based on the budget. Sometimes it's not much. Maybe it's just required to have it there. But if you don't do it correctly and there's no score, that might be an eligibility problem. So if it's a capital grant to tell us I'm gonna spend all this money on paying our, our CEO, we might just reject you right away because that's not what a capital grant is. So, or if you require a 100% match and you say it, it's not filled out, we just assume because of the application that you're not gonna be um, you doing a cash match and that could, that could make your application uh, ineligible, or if it's not ineligible, it will severely delay your application as we get to the point of executing it. Um, and then lastly, I know all you'll be fine, but this does happen, is that um, you're expected to achieve the outcomes in your application. I always joke that I'll, I can write the best application and then be done with it, but you do have to do that. So. So I use the job training example. Just if you're gonna if you're training 100 people, just just try to do that. And if you are gonna do it, have that discussion early and make sure they know because it's so much better to work with you early and try to get you back on track or figure out what's going on than to find out at the back end because that's when we start pulling money back or, or holding that back disbursements. We don't want you to start spending money that you might not get the money back for. And then lastly, I'm really excited about this. <laughs> um, that's our website.
You can go there. Catalog of State Financial Assistance. So the website for BCO grants. Catalog of State Financial Assistance, CSFA. You might hear that too. Uh, that's where you get all grants statewide, including BCO's grants. And then the last one is my favorite, the Grantee Resource Site. 19 um, cartoons where you can learn about these things. <laughs> I, I didn't even have to argue to, to purchase it. So it's a little more exciting than me speaking over a, uh, a PowerPoint. We have that, we also have one pagers. So uh, you can get the one pagers there uh, and read about what's going on. There's also a place there where you can sign up for our webinars. There's also a form, if you have a question, we'll get back to you. We get back to you that day. It's at, at the end of the day, maybe the next day, but our policy is within 24 hours, we will get back to you and then we'll try to coordinate. So if you are a current grantee and you reach out to us, we'll include your grant manager. We believe in communication, especially inside with a 330 person agency, a lot going on. So we always include them. We, we try to like navigate, help you navigate through the issues. And so that'll be on the grantee resource site there. And then also in this course where you can find the uh, grant application as well. I mean the grant, uh, the grant opportunity. So um, with that, hopefully those QR codes worked. Good. Any questions? Did you say we get a copy of these slides? Yes, I'll share them. I did share them. Right, so um, after today, uh, there, well, all of you who are here have received our email, we presume. Um, so we probably already have your email address, but we also sent a sign-up sheet around just so that we made sure that we had the correct email or whoever the individual is who came today so that we could follow up with these um, slides. Um, also contact information um, that you may need. So uh, anybody who has a question, we're gonna try to get that out to you today, tomorrow, virtually tomorrow, so that you have these slides and so our codes will be a part of it. We also are probably going to make some changes in our newsletter. I know most of you receive our newsletter so that we are, and we do try to constantly get access to some of these grant information so that people know what's going on and what you know what's out there that can be applied if you have questions you can also always call our office one of the questions that we get in the office a lot um, when people are looking for help is the changing of the grant manager so the grant manager yeah so we've applied they got a bunch of paperwork and they get the this person leaves <coughs> and they feel like they have to start all over how do we address that? A lot of that some, sometimes comes down to that, that back and forth I talked about with like the budget and making sure everything's outlined in the application. The big issue that I know takes some time is developing that scope of the project. And that's where the strong application comes in, is where if you really are clear about what's expected, that will, that will help expedite the process. So if there is a change, just make, also keep things on hand. Also, make sure you follow up with an email, especially if there's some sort of transition that may not have been that smooth. Because the way it works sometimes, people can bounce around in different agencies, like any of our staff, so they can quickly leave. And that's just part of, unfortunately, part of state of Illinois employees. So that's one thing, just, just make sure you have information on hand. And I can also speak for the grant office as well. And uh, you had mentioned uh, uh, in the grant opportunity, uh, you might say a cash match. Uh, uh, in particular, let's just say it's a capital, uh, a capital grant, and there's a cash match. Is that strictly cash, or does it uh, include an in-kind uh, match? It could. It, it could. That's a funding opportunity. Yep. Our small business development centers. I think it's a one-to-one, -one, but I think half half of that could be in kind. Yep. That's one off the top of my head. Sure. So yeah, in kind does count, does. depending on the point. We do say that specifically. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. Thank you. No problem. I'm not sure if this is the right place for this question. <laughs> um, we were awarded a grant. Yeah. Okay. What is the, is there a deadline for submitting and the 
for a deadline for using those funds. So have they reached out to you yet? I mean, well, I, I, yes, they have. Okay. Yes, and I'm working with them on Monday. Okay. So, and I asked about the deadline, and she, she said there really wasn't one. But I, I just wondered if you had a little more clarification. Yeah, yeah sure. And, and Tico Pignone is deputy director of the department. I don't know the legislative affairs on the board for the great representatives and other members of the General Assembly. Um, so to answer your question, there is no clear deadline. I know that that may create a little confusion. Um, the, the issue here is that we're using bond dollars, um, and as long as it becomes, it gets reappropriated every year, and your legislator will make sure that that happens, but when these bonds get reappropriated every year, then these are going to increase. With that, I would suggest getting that application in sooner rather than later, because if there was a situation where the, the general assembly can't fund the appropriation, it could get right, and then you're, you're stuck with the application materials and no funding. Um, so I always encourage folks to try to get that in sooner rather than later. If you got specific questions, um, Jira's team or the your grant manager would be good resources for that. Um, but again, I just encourage you to get those in sooner rather than later. Um, but for the foreseeable future, those will be there in the general assembly appropriations. Thank you. And, and can, I, can you just clarify it's only for capital? Yes, so those are, because they're using bonds and dollars, those have to be capital construction expenses. The top line on that is that they've got to have 12 and a half year life, um, and they've got to be construction. Um, sometimes you can have used fixtures if they're permanently get fixed, and we kind of get case by case scenario, but uh, a lot of times we see people who want to move back to school buses or, or fire trucks, and unfortunately those are not bonded or expensive. resource site there, we have that, and we can chat after, I need my phone number, my email address, and uh, you can reach out to me, text me, or uh, just, uh, you know, so thank you everybody. Before everybody gets up and leaves, thank you. Um, a couple, real quick, if anybody has any specific questions, um, please feel free, call our office, or, you know, feel free to stay a little bit longer. I also wanted to let everyone know that um, my office is hosting a mental health resource fair, College of DuPage, two weeks from today. November 29th. November 29th at the College of DuPage. Many of you work with different groups um, and mental health is something in our district across the, and across the county that is a pressing issue. Um, it intersects with all of the work that all of you in this room do. So we are having a resource fair at College of DuPage. If anybody would like a table, if anybody would like more information about that, please feel free to reach out to, to myself or, or Joe or Natalie on our team. We already talked about the Gata Pre-Certify. We're gonna set something up, but we're gonna make sure we include that information as well um, in a follow-up email just so everybody has it just in case. And again, I, sorry, Laura, go ahead. I just thought of one other question. I sure. So yeah. I know we have to have, for most these grants, you need a letter of good standing with the Secretary of State. Yes. In one of the one of the stipulations of the ones that we're working on, it also says something from a letter from the Attorney General. Okay. With no. Oh. Um, like so you're a nonprofit. Is that what yeah, it is? yeah. Yeah. So what, so what do we need from the letter? What is that? Let me get back to you on that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was just talking about that with David. Laura said I'm the capital one. It is. Okay. So there are a few of you in this room who have um, received capital grants, allocated capital grants. If you want to just wait a few minutes, and we can have a conversation. So 
So in the House and in the Senate, members have the opportunity. We are we were allotted um, capital dollars to be used in our districts. Um, I'll be honest with you, most of my dollars have gone to our villages and our park districts and some of those programs, as well as um, our uh, food pantries and addressing the issue of housing insecurities um, in our community. So, so that's what some of that conversation is. Other members from other districts have allocated dollars differently as well. It's, but as we've learned, or some of us have learned along the way, sometimes what we think is a project that can be done, unless it's capital, um, like the work that's being done at our, at our YMCA, it, it, it fits a different box. And so we have to, I'll say, maneuver that a little bit differently within the, the process. I'll be honest with you, I'm very um, stingy with my dollars um, that I have the opportunity to allocate. They are public dollars and I take them very seriously that these are our taxpayer dollars that belong in our communities. And so from my perspective, my allocation has always been to do projects that help the most people within our communities. And they don't always, aren't always like the pretty things, right? They might be an electrical board for one of our park district buildings that needs it. Um, not necessarily things that are ribbon cutting because they are our dollars as taxpayers and I wanna make sure that they are allocated and used appropriately um, because they're ours. And, and, and I take my job very seriously when in how I do that. That said, I'm here to help, write a letter, do whatever I can for agency or nonprofit organizations to be able to get those dollars as well, whether it comes from the state of Illinois or even a local project. Um, you know, I'll, I'll call out Dr. Bruno with the D41 Foundation and the Dolly Parton Program and, and whatever we need to do with the state to make sure our D41 Foundation gets those dollars to be able to continue that amazing program. So again, those are just some examples, but I, again, I want you all as my constituents and who work in, within my community serving our residents, that's how seriously I really take this responsibility of how we do our allocations. But I wanna make sure we get the dollars into our communities as fast as we can. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm just curious, how do you get the money? How did you get the money in the first place? I mean, how is that work? Oh, I didn't mean like check. No, no, no. How do you apply for? Where's the money? How did you get the money so that you can? Part of it's a budgeting process. Um, through, through, yeah. So through the budget process, um, you know, members, and again, it's it's changed over the years. To be honest with you, they didn't have. I mean, we didn't have a capital program. How many years? Twenty. Ten. Yeah. I mean, so when I was elected in 2018, they hadn't had one in ten years. Um, Governor Pritzker, that was a priority for him. I mean, our capital dollars are jobs. That's more, you know, it's it's money, it's revenue that's coming back into our community. So that was something that was very important to him and to the entire General Assembly to redo those programs. Typically what happens is, you know, maybe an agency will reach out to me. Um, again, my um, villages, the parks, uh, the college of DuPage, like they'll send us a list of, of things that are important to them. And then um, I can also say just me personally, I do a lot of work with the food pantry. Um, I do a lot of work with PADS and, and the YMCA's. And so I see the work firsthand and you know, that's something that I am passionate about and do what I can to help, um, you know, within the community. So. Sometimes I reach out to them and go, okay, what's going on? What do you guys need? But for example, and I keep looking at Katie, um, you know, we, we had the YMCA was doing a mental health, you know, doing uh, renovations for their building and was, you know, designated area for mental health. Well, that's my jam. I mean, that's what we do and that is a priority. So anything we could do to help make that kind of thing happen. And look at me, it doesn't come overnight. I think there's like, you know, people have this belief that we apply, we get it. I mean, it can take a year, two years. I mean, it can take a long time. So we want people to, if you are getting a grant, apply, get the paperwork, get it in. We have a saying in the house, get it in, get it out, because time is money and bids, the costs go up. 
And so we want to make sure people are able to, to get what it is that they need in their districts. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you all. Water, cookies, sweets, treats.